So, you have a Space Jam sequel for me? Yes, sir, I do. And I figure we could get LeBron James in this one and also really try to capture the spirit of the original. Oh, like in the sense that it was one of the most popular children's movies of its decade? No, in the sense that it was based on a commercial. Oh, gotcha. So what's it going to be a commercial for? Ourselves. I like the sound of that. Yeah, I really want kids to finish this movie and turn to their parents and say, you know... Warner Bros. Entertainment Inc. really is my favorite multinational mass media and entertainment conglomerate. Seems realistic enough, yeah, so what's the plan? Oh, well, you know all the stuff we own? I'm familiar. We put it in the movie. We put it in the movie? We put it in the movie. Oh, very cool. What else are we gonna do? Oh, practically nothing else. Oh. Yeah, in pretty much every scene, there's gonna be recognizable Warner Bros. property, or someone's gonna say Warner Bros. out loud. Amazing. Sounds like the cinematic equivalent of scrolling through our Wikipedia page. Exactly. So LeBron is trying really hard to get his kids to follow in his footsteps, right? But his son Dom likes making video games more than he likes playing basketball. Okay. And then one day LeBron and Dom are invited to Warner Bros. to meet with some studio executives. That's my job. Yeah, it is. Oh, I'm tight. Oh my god. Oh my god. Anyway, so the studio execs try to convince LeBron to leverage his fame and shove him into popular existing franchises as a kind of soulless revival cash grab kind of thing. That does sound like me. But he thinks it's a bad idea, so the algorithm behind the idea kidnaps him and his son. The algorithm? Yeah, see, the bad guy in this movie is this algorithm in the Warner Bros. serververse called Algy Rhythm, and I figure we could get Don Cheadle to play him. Oh, he's great. Yeah, I mean, he's never been in a Warner Bros. movie, so it's not confusing casting. Ocean's Eleven. Sh it's okay, though. Nothing really matters. That's a good point. So anyway, the algorithm's whole thing is that he wants fame and recognition, and since LeBron turned his movie idea down, he's pissed. So what does he do? He challenges him to a game of basketball. I guess that's a logical step to take. It might be. So he kidnaps LeBron's son, and then he sends LeBron flying into the serververse, and he's like, ah. I mean, hopefully we could get a better scream out of him than that. Yeah, we'll get whatever he gives us on the first take. He's a busy man. That's fair. And then for the next big chunk of the movie, he's going to be animated. Why? So he can do a huge chunk of the movie in a single day in a sound booth instead of a full month on set. That's fair. So LeBron gets to Looney Tunes World, but Bugs Bunny's the only one there. How come? Well, because see, Algy Rhythm convinced all the other characters to go hang out on other planets. Why? Well, because this way we could go visit a bunch of our movies as they get recruited. But, like, based on the story, why would he have done that? I just told you. Gotcha. So LeBron wants to get really strong characters to help the team, right? Like the Iron Giant and Superman and stuff. Smart. But Bugs Bunny just wants his friends back, so he starts flying to the planets they're on. So they visit our movies and our TV shows and things that we own? They do. They go to Harry Potter World. World. The granny is in the Matrix. Elmer Fudd is in Austin Powers. Oh, that's exactly the kind of thing people go crazy for in the early 2000s. That is when I wrote these, and I haven't changed them a bit. So let's hope children today are really into that slow mo Trinity scene from the Matrix, you know, in the, in the late 90s. Fingers crossed. Oh, and also they end up face to face with the Justice League, but Daffy Duck did something silly. So when LeBron's like, Do you guys play basketball? They just stare at him. But I mean, if LeBron really explains to them that his son's in danger, surely the Justice League would help. Oh, it's too late. We're already off to the next Warner Bros. reference. Oh, okay, gotta keep moving, I guess. Yeah, you can't just stop the movie because the solution to the movie's main problem presents itself. True. So anyway, eventually it's time for the game, and Algy Rhythm has Dom playing on his team along with a bunch of other players they created together. How'd they do that? Well, see, Dom has this borderline magical scanning technology on his phone that he'd use to scan players into his game that he's making. How does he have that technology? Unclear. So then Al G brings virtually every single Warner Bros. character into the audience of the game. I mean, Game of Thrones people are there, Pennywise the Clown. Okay, are these characters gonna be, like, in character? Kind of, but also really interested in watching the game, and also kind of dancing, but interacting with each other too. Oh, this raises a ton of questions. Yeah, I know. Please don't ask any of them. Oh, okay, I won't. Yeah, all you really need to know is that it's gonna look like a sea of cosplayers going to their first Comic-Con, and not quite nailing the whole thing yet. Got it. And then Al's gonna use Dom's technology to also scan in a bunch of people from the real world. Oh, he is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If he was just looking for recognition, wouldn't zapping a bunch of real people into a computer accomplish that? I mean, why even play basketball at this point? Oh, yeah, you're right. Okay, then let's just skip the basketball in this Space Jam movie then. Well, no, there should be some basketball.
all. Then I'm gonna need you to get all the way off my back about this guy's plan. Oh, okay, let me get off of that thing. So then he reveals that if LeBron loses this game, everybody's gonna get trapped in the serververse forever. Oh no, everybody must be terrified. They are terrified, and then Dom enters, so they all cheer for him. But if he wins, they all get stuck in the serververse forever. Yeah, they all cheer anyway for some reason. Oh, okay. So then the game starts and the goon squad scores over a thousand points because you get points for style and stuff, whatever. How does the scoring system work? No idea. It's just going to be all over the place. Oh, it's going to be hard for the Yannis to feel any stakes if the scoring is arbitrary. Actually, yep. Okay. Then we're going to take a little break so Porky Pig can rap battle no one. Sure, that may as well happen. It's gonna. And so LeBron's son doesn't feel bad at all that if he wins, he'll trap thousands of people and ruin their lives. Nope. Oh, interesting. And we're also going to have the characters say things like, well, that happened, and Granny's going to say, haters going to hate. Grannies don't say that. I know. And then there's a guy who can slow down time, so he uses that power to do that Quicksilver thing from X-Men, except, you know, extremely derivative and not as good. If he can do that, why doesn't he just do that constantly? Oh, well, he's going to try to do it again later, but he can't, because Granny's from the Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. So then eventually Bugs Bunny's gonna sacrifice himself by doing this glitchy move that leads to him getting deleted, but it allows the good team to win. Very brave. Yeah, and so then everybody goes back to the real world. Are there any consequences for Warner Bros for creating an algorithm that almost trapped thousands of people inside a server? Nope, that's what I like to hear. And then Bugs Bunny gets deleted and dies. Oh, very sad. It's gonna be hard to end on a happy note with Bugs Bunny dying. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, Back up on Earth, Bugs Bunny shows up next to LeBron, and he's fine. What? How? I don't care. Okay, how did he get to the real world? Unclear, but he brings all the Looney Tunes with him. Well, what's the explanation for how all that happened? Well, sir, the movie's over now, so don't worry about that. Oh, okay, I won't. So what do you think? Well, it sounds like a ton of fun, although I do think maybe we should keep Pepe Le Pew out of this movie. That character's now kind of, ugh. Yeah, I guess that makes sense, but other than that, every WB character's fair game. I don't see why not. Hey everybody, it's Ryan. Hope you enjoyed that pitch.